What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about how to get into the always popular and ever dynamic University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I've got five tips for you, so here we go. Tip number one, and this first tip will have both evergreen content in it as well as some information that is specific to the 2020-2021 application cycle. So here we go with tip number one. Below this video, I want you to notice in the description section to refer to the link to my How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically article. Read every word of this article because if you can do everything that the article is telling you to do, you will put yourself into a great position to do what it takes to get into UNC at Chapel Hill. Now, my only two caveats would be as follows. A, in-state students, meaning residents of North Carolina, can get away with slightly lower average test scores than students from out of state. And B, in the event UNC suspends test requirements in response to the coronavirus pandemic, but still reviews test scores from applicants, I highly recommend still taking the SAT and ACT and doing very well on at least one. Now, in the case of UNC, for out-of-state applicants, that would be, you know, 1450 or so or higher on the SAT, or an 33-plus, give or take, on the ACT. If you can accomplish this, definitely send in your scores with your application. Yet, I do realize because of the pandemic, some colleges like Caltech and probably others by the time you watch this video won't even be considering ACT and SAT scores for a while, which could be a trend that spreads to UNC. So keep an eye on UNC's admissions website to see where the wind blows. In any case, while UNC Chapel Hill does not require SAT subject test scores, if you can still submit strong scores from one or more SAT subject tests, I say do it. Depending on the exact SAT subject test, a strong score ranges from 700 to 800. In your position, I would aim for a 750 or higher before confidently submitting an SAT subject test score to UNC at Chapel Hill. Moving on to tip number two apply early action. If you don't apply early action to UNC, you are really doing yourself a disservice. There is zero reason to apply regular decision when you can apply by UNC's EA deadline, which recently has been October 15th, but which can change from year to year. Applying early action shows you can get your act together in a prompt and efficient manner and it also demonstrates earnestness of intent. All colleges want as much clarity as possible as early in the admission cycle as possible, so give UNC what it wants by applying early action if you can do so while also accomplishing what I am recommending in my other tips throughout this video. Why apply to UNC regular when so many of the spots in the entering class are already full? Strike while the iron is hot by applying early action. Tip number three, UNC Chapel Hill understands that the Common Applications Activities page is a one-size-fits-all form that does not allow many talented applicants to appropriately elaborate on the depth of their extracurricular accomplishments throughout high school. With this in mind, UNC at Chapel Hill, on its supplement to the Common Application, allows applicants to upload an extracurricular resume. This is an amazing opportunity if you grab it, but far too few students do. Believe it or not, a lot of students will upload nothing to this optional portion of the UNC Chapel Hill Supplement. Still others will upload a little resume that doesn't really go far, if at all, beyond what the student already shared in the activities page of the common portion of the common application. Use this resume upload opportunity to elaborate on extracurricular activities that you began describing in the activities page of the Common App and or use this resume upload opportunity to describe for the first time activities that never made the cut at all to be included on the 10 entry Common App activities page. 
In fact, in past years, UNC has explicitly instructed uh, students to, quote, submit something that goes beyond what you're providing through your common application, end quote, here, if you are going to share anything. So with that in mind, now you don't just want to use some random format or structure for this resume upload. You want to convey more information about your extracurricular depth and breadth, but you need to do so effectively and efficiently. So with that in mind, you need to build an extraordinary and personalized extracurricular resume before you are ready to upload your resume to UNC Supplement. So how do you do that, you might be asking. You've got to take my short and insanely cheap online course aptly named how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume, which I link to below in this video's description. As I often say, it's no longer about simply being a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like UNC at Chapel Hill. It's just as much, if not more important, to know how to communicate that you are a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like UNC at Chapel Hill. This quick online extracurricular resume building course will help you do just that vis-a-vis -vis the very important yet often overlooked optional resume upload button on the UNC Chapel Hill supplement to the common application. Oh my, we are already at tip number four, and this is about UNC Chapel Hill supplement. All right, supplement to the common application. And it can change from year to year, but during the 2020-2021 application cycle, the university is requiring applicants to complete two short essays topping out at 250 words each. You actually get to choose from four prompts to complete these two short essays. Now remember, no matter which prompts you choose to respond to, make sure to keep your responses focused on you. This is easier said than done because of the leading nature of some of the prompts. So for instance, the first two prompt options explicitly ask about something other than you. One reads, tell us about a peer who has made a difference in your life. While the other asks, what do you hope will change about the place where you live? Now don't be tricked into writing a little book report about a peer or where you live. Instead, use your peer or place where you live to communicate more about you and your value system. You have so few words to work with, I highly recommend quickly introducing your peer or place where you live in your responses if you choose these prompts. This means that you want to describe either your peer or the place you live in concrete showing detail quickly before just as quickly taking just as much time and just as much space to reflect on either how the peer has changed you or why you hope the place you live changes the way you want it to. Again, your responses need to shed more light on you, the person UNC is considering accepting into its community over the next four years. The other two prompt options are a bit easier to approach, literally and methodically. One reads, what is one thing that we don't know about you that you want us to know? The other asks, what about your background or what perspective, belief, or experience will help you contribute to the education of your classmates at UNC? Overall, I recommend avoiding answering the last prompt unless you really have a background that's in demand at UNC and or have an experience or perspective that is pretty rare for a high school senior to have and you were able to articulate that well. The other three prompts, depending on your eagerness to answer them, are all relatively straightforward to ace as long as you keep the spotlight on you and showing your character throughout what you share. Even the fourth one can be great as long as you don't come across as too typical. Now, I'm not going to take too much more time on essay drafting tips, but remember to treat these responses as mini essays. That means you should have a mini little thesis in the beginning, a mini body in the middle, and a mini conclusion at the end for a 250-word masterpiece on each. That brings us to our final tip, tip number five. You probably have noticed at this point, at least this year, UNC does not ask you directly why you want to attend 
UNC at Chapel Hill. You may not yet even know the answer to such a question if I ask you right now. I strongly encourage you to have a clear and well-developed answer before you start drafting any response to a UNC supplemental short essay question, because if you know with your eyes wide open why you really are pining to attend UNC at Chapel Hill, even with the limited word count on your two supplemental short essay responses and their topic's lack of explicit connection to UNC, you could and maybe even should throw in a sentence or two alluding to, for instance, how you can affect the change you want to see in the place you grew up by attending UNC. Or, in sharing something you have not yet shared, you may very well want to share why you feel UNC Chapel Hill is the right fit for you by far. So you see, if you have a real clear motivation for wanting to get into and attend UNC at Chapel Hill, you will be able to better make your personalized case for being accepted by integrating such messaging and motivations into your responses to UNC's two short answer questions. Now, if you don't want to tamper with dropping hints in these short essays as to why UNC is the perfect fit for you, the other option, and this is where it gets a bit more controversial, is using the Common App's additional information section for UNC only to write a third essay specifically about UNC and your motivations for applying. I don't recommend this as much as I recommend putting such messaging into one of your two UNC short answer responses, but if you feel like you have a lot to say, I would say use the Common App's additional information section for all it's worth. It is located on the writing page of the Common App of the Common the Common Part, excuse me, of the Common Application. So if you do choose to write why you are particularly excited by the opportunity to attend UNC in this space, make sure you only keep such content here when you submit your Common Application to UNC. You don't want Duke or Emory or UVA or other colleges getting such an essay. Now, the longer such a non-required third essay becomes, the riskier the gamble of doing it at all becomes, because generally admissions officers don't like doing more work than they have to, and in this case, reading more than they have to. So I only recommend this third supplemental essay option if UNC is by far your first choice college and you can eloquently explain why you would benefit greatly by attending, and why UNC at Chapel Hill would benefit greatly from having you attend. Remember, if you take this path, you really need to focus on how you are differentiated from a ho-hum applicant. Don't do this extra non-required essay if you are going to say something completely forgettable and completely unremarkable. Only do it if you are filled with passion for UNC at Chapel Hill, it can paint a picture of why you and UNC at Chapel Hill are a match made in heaven. Now, if you do all I've suggested, I have a very good feeling you will be celebrating getting into UNC at Chapel Hill soon enough. If you get in, make sure to start wearing UNC colors with pride. You can Start shopping for some of my favorite UNC gear by clicking on my UNC shopping links below this video. Finally, for personalized college admissions coaching, you can always find me and work with me at collegemeister.com. In the meantime, good luck, and until next time, I'm College Meister Craig Meister with all you need to get in.